Hello, my beautiful Holy Family. I'm your pastor, Father Joe Krupp, and we're right here inside of the church that someday, very soon, please, Jesus, we'll be praying in together. But I wanted to share something glorious with you. I'm gonna step out of the way and show you a gift we received at Holy Family from St. Casimir in Lansing. Okay, people of God, this is our new Stations of the Cross. This is what uh, will have me surrounded by these beautiful Stations of the Cross as we pray together our Lord's Passion. Maybe we'll do them as a private devotion, maybe all together, whatever it may be, we'll be able to look at these. And, and when we do, I'm gonna ask us to remember the good people of St. Casimir, whose generosity and love for Jesus made these possible. And people of St. Casimir, just know we thank the Lord for you and we remember you. And we'll remember you every time we see these. Okay, Holy Family, I got off that scaffolding and I didn't die in the process. We have our first miracle at the church. Uh, I want to take a moment now, guys, to offer you, uh, I guess, an encouragement and a challenge. So the encouragement is this. A year ago, we moved out of our church into the hall to pray mass. And at the beginning, I begged you. I said, let's remember, we got to be patient and flexible on, until we move into our new church. And my gosh, it was so beautiful uh, to be with you during that time. I don't know if you remember, I said it a few times during mass, how very blessed I was at your flexibility and patience with all the strangeness of praying mass in the hall. Well, we thought we'd be here by July, but obviously the virus made that not possible. But I pray you remember it because it touched my heart as your priest that you were so flexible and patient. Now, that's, that's my uh, blessing and I want to offer us a little challenge and it's to remember these are weird days, guys. We can't do all the things we would like to do. We can't provide quick and helpful answers all the time. This virus and the quarantine have really thrown everybody off so i'm looking at you and i'm telling you hang in there god is bigger than all of this and be conscious in your heart of the fact that you might not be as patient as usual it might be a little harder to figure out what fights to fight and what ones to let go it's okay that's part of this but be conscious of it as we move forward okay uh we, uh, all these different things affect different realities. And since it's a church and a school, everything's all tangled together. You know, I, I think of how last year I started meeting with a group of people and training them with Lori so that someday they could take over training all of our ministers, our ushers, our Eucharistic ministers, our lectors, our servers, our sacristans. And so the whole idea was that when we get into our new church in July, that uh, they would teach everyone how to serve in our new parish. Well, gosh, of course, not only did that not happen, but uh, we got to a point in the quarantine where we weren't allowed to have uh, volunteers. We still weren't. So what did we do? We took those people who will be training everybody and we just kind of plug them into mass. And uh, so that's, that's gonna help us when it's time to move back into this church, we'll be more ready to go. Those guys will be able to train up people to be Eucharistic ministers, lectors, servers, ushers, blah, 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 all of that in our new church. And it's coming, guys, it's really coming. So uh, keep that in mind, right? Just one of those things where God was in charge. God was already ahead of us and we had a system in place where we obeyed the rules the governor gave us, but also were able to accomplish the good of praying mass with lectors, servers, Eucharistic ministers, or whatnot. And I can't wait for the day when all the men and women of our church can serve up here, right, uh, as lectors and servers and ushers and whatever. We're getting there, guys. Hang in there, all right? We're in a really unique position, guys, and I'm so fired up. I mentioned this at all the masses this weekend. It's possible, it's very, I mean, want to say likely, that we won't have to take out any loan from the diocese to finish this church if we receive 100% of the pledges that we anticipate we're going to receive. If we can get everyone who pledged to fulfill those pledges, we're going to be in great shape when this church is done financially. So what I want to do is offer you this. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, and what we uh, want you to do, if you're willing and able, 
is to call if you have any questions about your pledge or even if you find that you want to change your pledge in some way. Just call the parish office. You'll find that number in the text that's associated with this video, okay? Now what I did was I asked Kevin and Carrie to be available to personally and I promise you confidentially answer any questions you might have or uh, talk about your pledge with you. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, give us a call. Tomorrow's the best day just because we're setting that day aside for it, but call when you can and know that Kevin and Carrie, you can trust their confidentiality and they'll have all the information there hopefully to answer any questions you might have. Of course, I'm crazy if I don't say this, if you haven't pledged or donated to the building fund and you would like to, oh, we'll take those. Yeah, uh, again, just give us a call at the number you'll see beneath this video, right in the little text that describes the video and let us know how you wanna help and oh, we'll make it happen. So uh, guys, we're close, we're close, we're close. Look at behind me, look at what's happening. And I don't know, can they see the purple uh, styrofoam altar? That's not our altar, guys. That's the mock-up we're using. Uh, but soon, very soon, we'll be praying together in our new spiritual home where for the next hundred or more years, we're gonna baptize our little squeakers. We're gonna join couples together in marriage. We're gonna cry together at funerals and cling to our hope in the resurrection. We're gonna receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through the sacrament of confirmation. We're gonna receive the Eucharist every day. I could go on and on. It's coming, guys, and it's coming because of God's goodness and your generosity. Thank you very much. Jesus bless you.